What's up everyone, I am Alex and I want to make this mini series on sustainable eats. Why is that? It's because personally and hopefully to more chefs, sustainably sourcing food is very important. One of the big things about meat is how really animal production, animal agriculture on the planet is one of the biggest green gas producers like of all times. In America it's not really popular to eat the whole animal. So basically we mostly eat the meat, we mostly eat the cute steaks and all that good stuff, and then take the offals and throw them in the bin. And I wanna basically celebrate the fact that to use kind of like everything that we are slaughtering. So I'm gonna start by showing you how to make chicken liver pate. This is the perfect starter kit to introducing and enjoying offals to your diet. It's sweet, it's buttery, and it's very versatile. So I'm gonna show you how to make that today. First off, for our chicken liver parfait, we're gonna get one pound of chicken livers. Ew. Because we're gonna blend everything together, we don't have to clean the livers at all. So I'm just gonna pat them dry very, very well. Livers all come sort of into two lobs, and that's normal. And there's gonna be a little bit of white around them, and that's internal fat. Paper towels. Make sure everything is very, very dry until we have a nice, hot pan ready to go. So I have this on high heat and I'm gonna wait until it's basically at a smoking point. In just a few seconds before the pan is ready, I can uncover my livers and then I'm gonna salt them pretty, pretty, pretty liberally. Flip all the livers. I know, you know, you look at them, you're like, yeah, it's definitely nothing like a beautiful ribeye, but we'll get to make it taste just as good or even better than a ribeye, really. To me, liver have a very special place in my heart because it's the kind of meal that when my mom would be working out really late, dad would be making dinner for us and would be eating basically seared bologna or seared liver. So I have a very, very <laughs> So I have a very special place in my heart for liver. Pan is up to a smoking point. And we're gonna do this in batches because you don't want to over prep the pan. I'm gonna sear them on both sides for about two minutes on each side. While my liver is cooking, I'm gonna prepare the only few other ingredients in there. Two shallots. I already peeled them, so I'm just gonna slice them as thinly as I can. At this point, flip my liver. See, we got a nice round caramelization all around this beautiful liver. So two more minutes on this side, and then I will go straight into my blender. I'm also gonna do a little bit of thyme, enough to get about a tablespoon of pig thyme. So these have been cooking for about four minutes. We can see they're still a little bouncy. And at this point, when they've cooked for four minutes at high heat, they're about to cook to medium, medium well done. And I'm gonna put it right up into this blender here. Put those brown bits in that oil in my blender with the leather. Because we're gonna do another batch. And if it, we wouldn't have removed this, it might have gotten a little too dark and a little bitter. So I'm gonna start fresh. A little bit of oil and my second batch of liver. All right, so my second batch of liver is almost finished. Is almost finished cooking. You can see there's still a little bit of pink. That's what you want because once you'll blend it, instead of just having this brown color, it's gonna have a little hint of pink. If you also overcook your liver, you're gonna most likely get a little bit more granular sort of texture. If you keep them nice and medium, you're gonna have this really, really nice buttery texture. Same pan here, and this is a very crucial part. We're gonna build a lot of flavor with those two shallots. And this is really no time to take a shortcut. You're gonna wanna cook those shallots until they're so, 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 so caramelized. They're gonna look basically like shallot jam. The onions have cooked for like six minutes now. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon to my picked, carefully cooked thyme in there. Bloom all the flavors together. And then it's gonna be time for brandy or brown booze. I've tried it with rum, we've tried it with cognac, but today I'm just gonna do a simple brandy. I'm gonna do about a third of a cup. Turn off your heat so it doesn't explode in your face. Get that in here. And if you do wanna make fire, then you can turn it on and then do a little like, like this. So don't blow it fire, it's no good. Just don't blow it fire, let it, just dismiss everything, don't put it on fire. Just keep it off the flame for a few seconds. We wanna cook it until it, once again, looks like it's just onions again. Scrape all the bits from that pan. How dreamy. A nice onion thyme and brandy jam that is going in my blender. The only things I'm going to add now, a quarter cup of butter, if you're gonna eat liver like that, you're gonna have to add a lot of butter. And a little bit of salt, black pepper, a tablespoon 
a balsamic. This is going to add, once again, a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of acidity. If you don't have any balsamic, you're welcome to use like good like sherry vinegar or red wine vinegar, anything that has some sort of like cooked booze kind of flavor. Blend it. Once we have a beautiful buttery like consistency, mm. this is sort of surprising. But Let's pack it up. You get yourself a few really nice containers, a spoonful at a time in your container, and gently tap it on your whoop, tap it on your counter to get rid of any air bubbles. We're doing that just so it stays better longer. This is going to yield about two pints. This is good. You see, it's kind of airless. Smooth it out just a touch. So now that it's looking really nice like this and flat, we're gonna chill it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Magic, here's another one that's chilled, ready to go. The really exciting part now is to create that layer of jam on the top. So all you're gonna have to do is take your favorite jam. Really, if you're not like big on liver, I say the more jam, the happier. And this is not, you're not here gonna try and cook the jam. You want to bring it back to a liquid state. Stage? State. State. Back to a liquid form. You don't want it to cook it or make it too hot because then it's just going to blend in with the chicken liver. So now that it's formed like this, I'm going to pour right on top. You've created this seal, this protective and delicious seal for your chicken liver. Now how to eat chicken liver parfait. Like and subscribe and share and blah 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 and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.